Hi, welcome. This is Talibus Juice once again, and this is part two to our manifesting video that we did, step by step manifesting. Now, you've got your list of goals. You would have written them out from the last video. Hopefully, you got those there. Uh, don't worry if they're not perfect. Just begin. You'll adjust as you go along, and I'll explain that in a later video. So, what we're going to do is we're going to if you've seen if you've seen my video on the conscious and subconscious. The male, the, sub, the conscious, we're going to use him to impregnate the female and tell her what we want her to basically manifest. We're going to impregnate her with, with the things that we want. She's going to bring it to fruition. So you remember the, the power of the mind. The conscious mind controls the conscious things. The subconscious mind does the rest. So it's doing most of the work down below the surface. Now, when you was little, when you was a baby, your conscious mind wasn't that developed so stories like Santa Claus and so forth I was told about Santa Claus um, these are stories that we believed in though we know now they're not true but you know as a baby that God wasn't able to guard against such stories and therefore it lapped it all up now that we know better we can distinguish between what's real and not real in that sense so we can say there's no Santa Claus he's not coming and uh, we don't believe that story we don't buy into it anymore and remove that but there's other stories that this God did not guard against. <clears throat> There's stories that he couldn't guard against because he didn't know any better. And these are the kind of stories that are working below the surface that create limiting beliefs. So we're going to look to change those stories. And we're going to do it by telling a new story. We now have to become our own storyteller and tell us the story that we want to hear because we all have a story playing in the background. And it may be I'm not good enough, I'm not tall enough, um, I'm not good looking enough. Uh, whatever it's going to be, I'm not suave enough, call it what you want, um, but we all have them playing in the background. And these stories have been told to us by somebody else, and we lapped them up. Now, we need to tell our own story. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen this movie, but if you haven't, you should see it. It's called Ruby Sparks, and it's about a struggling novelist who wrote a story on his typewriter about the kind of girl that he felt would fall for him. And, lo and behold, she manifested into real life. Now, the, the story itself is considered fantasy, but magic is fantasy. So this is creation. It's a deep story. Uh, you should, it's a deep movie. You should watch it if you want some understanding, uh, if, you want, if you want to see something along the lines of what we're talking about here, because it is the same kind of thing that we're doing here. What you're going to do is you're going to put pen to paper and you're going to write your own story. And it's going to be about what you want. So what you're doing is you're programming your subconscious mind to give you the things that you want. And putting pen to paper or typing it out on your laptop, your PC, your typewriter if you have one, it doesn't matter. However you do it. But by putting pen to paper is a really powerful way of doing it. And one way, one reason why it's so powerful is because when you're telling yourself something, a lot of times, because you're so used to speaking a certain way to yourself, you have a, a habit that's formed, um, like a ritual of talking to yourself a specific way. So what you want to do is you want to speak to yourself in such a way that that you're empowering yourself. And by putting pen to paper at that moment that it's written down, there's nothing else written down that's gonna that is going to contradict it. So now you have your message there. And there's two rules to this by the way when you write this story. What you're gonna do is you're gonna first of all write it in the positive. So things like um, I don't want to be this, I don't want to have that and so forth don't do that and things like I'm not so for example you're not going to say you know I'm not fat um, I don't work here I don't have to do that and so forth because your subconscious mind doesn't understand that it, it doesn't understand things like not it doesn't hear that so if you say things like you know um, I'm not fat and it's just it simply understands I'm fat that's why I'm type person if you say to me how are you today um, I'm never going to turn around and say not bad though I hear it a lot people say yeah not bad because the conscious mind hears bad. How are you today? Bad. And I'm not saying that, don't get me wrong, program takes a while, especially on certain program takes a while, because it's done without much thought of energy given to it. So we're going to get some energy to this. It's different. But if someone says to me, someone say to me, how are you today? I will tell them I'm good. I'm well. And so forth. Just because I'm conscious of how it takes it. And um, the other thing you want to put in there is, present tense so you don't want to say i'm going to have or i want to have and so forth what you want to say is you want to say that i do have i have now i am you know i'm fit i'm healthy i have a bmw z4 convertible 
be if that's the car you want. Uh, I have a Lamborghini. Um, I have a, a three-bedroom house in a specific area with a garden and so forth. I am my ideal weight, etc. That's what you want to do. So remember, it's positive in the present tense. Now, what you do when you write this story, we're going to do something that's really important also, which is because we are going to lie to ourselves in this story, but because we're writing on pen to paper, there's nothing to contradict it, but we are going to make some truth with some lies here. This is this is key. When you write something, say, for example, I wake up in the morning and I feel energized and raring to go and ready to take on the day. Now, you may wake up in the morning and need a cup of coffee just to kickstart yourself. You may feel, feel lethargic in the morning. So what you're going to do is the fact that you wake up in the morning is true if you wake up in the morning. So, for example, I wake up in the morning. That's the truth. And I feel energized. That could be the lie. But we're going to mix and entwine the truth, the two. And that's a really important way of doing things because it allows your, it's a bit like pacing and leading if you like. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to pace and lead yourself here. And you're going to start to reprogram. So you wake up in the morning, there's a truth. And then you add something to it. So that's the pace. Then you add something to it that you want to have happen. That's the lead. And you're going to do that consistently. You're just going to mix truth with lies here. So for example, you know, I take the tube to work. I always get a seat and the journey smooth. You may not always get a seat, but you take the tube to work. For example, you know, if you're a type of person that you are in a, for example, a sales role and you have to make, say, 300 calls a day, you may say, or 200 calls, two or 300 calls a day, you may say, you know, I hit the phones, I make 200 calls a day. My close rate is X, Y, and Z. People want to buy from me all the time. They're very receptive towards me. So what you're doing is you're leading on the story how you want it to be. Now, rituals. A ritual is not necessarily simply sitting down and chanting a mantra and using all this paraphernalia, though there is a reason for that. That's not what I'm talking about when I speak about a ritual. You know, and we'll cover a little bit on rituals. But it's like if you wake up in the morning, you have a coffee, that's a ritual that you have. If you wake up in the morning, you go running, that's a ritual. If you wake up in the morning and you have breakfast, that's a ritual. And if you wake up in the morning, you have a moan about things, you know, because your alarm's gone off and it's like, oh gosh, do I have to get up? That's a ritual also. Rituals can be empowering or disempowering. Just the same way thoughts can be positive and negative. The same way circumstances can be. There's no good and bad, right and wrong. Just imagine it as lower or higher energy vibrations. So you're going to create a new ritual. You wake up in the morning and you tell yourself your story that you've written out. You wrote out what it is you want to have and you wake up and you tell yourself that. But you're going to do it with energy. You're going to walk around as you do it. You're going to walk around. You're going to tell it to yourself. Look in the mirror if need be. Uh, for me, I like to look in the mirror. Look in the mirror and say, look, this is my situation. This is what I have. This is what I do. Um, so, for example, it could be, I wake up in the morning, I feel energized. I'm raring to go. You know, I can't wait to get to work because I love my job. I get phenomenal results. I get massive results. You know, everyone wants to speak to me. Everyone wants to do business with me. People love working with me. I'm healthy. I have a healthy meal uh, in the morning for breakfast. I have a smoothie. I put bananas in there. I put muesli. I put... Uh, nuts in there. I put kiwi. I put cucumber in there. I blend it in. I had a, I had a spoon of protein in there. Uh, I had some green grass in there, and so forth. That kind of thing. So you're putting that energy into it. You know, when I get dressed, I look good. I go to work. People look at me and they give me. Uh, women smile at me. You know, uh, people say hello to me. Uh, my journey's smooth. If I want to sit down, I get a seat, and so forth, and that kind of thing. So you're going to tell it to yourself. Now, obviously, that's not my exact story, but it's just to give you an idea of. How are you going to do this? And it doesn't have to be many points. It doesn't have to be too long neither. But you're just going to do this and you're going to give it some energy. Really put something into it, just like you're doing a workout. Don't sit there and just simply say, I wake up, I feel great, I feel energized, I have this, I have that. Because that's very passive. You know, Remember, your conscious mind is the male. So you've got to embody the male characteristics here of a male, which is to be more aggressive and more dominating more domineering like the planet mars so you got to re you you do have to really do that put some force and energy behind it allow the woman to be impregnated what you're doing is you're seducing her and then you're making love to her um by <laughs> so without using words that are a bit more aggressive the fact is you know you're basically going to blow her brains out with this uh, you're going to tell her what she needs to hear most of us have been seduced by our, our subconscious mind. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
so long as your subconscious mind is seducing you with the right things. So if you wake up in the morning, you're being seduced by messages that are not empowering, it's going to disempower the male. Then the male can't do what he needs to do, and the male is the hunter, the go-getter. You know, the female is the one that cooks, the one that breeds, the one that brings life to things. So we need both the male and female here to work together. Um, this is not about a real male and female situation. This is simply about the mind here that we're working with. So this is what you're going to do. Um, I hope this has been helpful. Yes, you may have some questions on this. If you do, by all means, shoot me a message on Facebook. You've got my Facebook link. Uh, please like, subscribe so you can get the other videos that are coming out also. I'm going to follow up on these. I'm going to touch on these. There is going to be another step to this as well. Um, and there's going to be some other little tips, tricks, some mind hacks I'm going to, I'm going to show you. But first of all, I do want you to develop the habit. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Small things done consistently produce extraordinary results. You may not be able to do 10 push-ups a day, but if every day you do a little bit towards it, by the end of the year, you've done a phenomenal amount. For example, let's say you can't do 10 press-ups, but you can only do five. Do five every day. You know, Then aim for six the following week. Then aim for seven and build up to it gradually. But as long as you're doing something towards it every single day, every single day you're going to be a step closer to it. It begins with the mind. Begin it here. Give to it commit to it as well so a lot of people start something they try it uh, if it doesn't work out for them or even if it does work out for them they give up and they go back to their old routines and their old habits we're going to develop some new ones now it's been stated that 21 days is all you need to develop a new habit you know give it 30 days do it consistently you will start to see results with this um, I know I have in my life I know other people that have in their lives and you can too I hope you've enjoyed it um, thanks for listening I hope that's helped and until next time, peace out, be good, God bless.